Okay, today we're doing chapter eight, lesson two, multiply by seven, pages 435 through 436 in your math book. Okay, so we are multiplying by seven. You can decompose larger facts into smaller facts. They don't have to be even numbers. So let's look at our word problem. Remember, we do our three read. A museum has a display of some kinds of beetles. There are some of each kind of beetle. Okay, so I see a museum, there's displays of beetles, not something I really wanna see because I don't like bugs, but here we are. And there's some of each kind of beetle. So let's find out how many there are. A museum has a display of nine kinds of beetles. There are seven of each kind of beetles. So I see a display of nine different kinds, there are seven of each. So how many beetles, oh, let me read it again. A museum has a display of nine kinds of beetles. There are seven of each kind of beetle. How many beetles are on display? Okay, so we want to know how many beetles are all together. We're going to write a multiplication sentence with a symbol for the unknown. So we have nine groups of seven in this first problem. We're going to decompose the factor seven into add ends of five and two. So you don't have to have an even number. The reason why you choose five and two is because those are really easy to multiply by. Everybody can skip count by fives and by twos. So when, you when you're doing seven, five and two are your go-to numbers to, to split into. Four and three is fine, but they're a little bit harder to remember. So do it the easiest way possible. That's the whole purpose for doing this, to make multiplication easier. Okay, so we're going to use the known facts of nine times five and nine, time, nine times two. So if you look over here at the array, you'll see you've got nine rows. Hold on. Okay, you've got nine rows of seven, which is the same as five and two. Put the plus sign in there and see it. Five plus two is seven. So you have five in each row. On the first array, you have two in each row on the second array. So this is the same as nine times five, and this is the same as nine times two, and all together, it's nine times seven. So nine times five, skip count by fives on our fingers like I taught you, our number line fingers. So we do, so we get to nine fingers. Five, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45. Nine times two, 18. Then we're going to add them up. Now you can do, you can stack the numbers like this, 45 plus 18. And then you start in the ones column, five plus eight is 13. Put down the three, carry the one, four plus one is five and one more is six. So the answer is 63. Or you can do mental math. So 45 plus 18. Okay, 40 plus 10 is 50. Five plus eight is 13. Five and 10 is 60 plus three is 63. So either way you'll get 63. So the nine times seven is 63. The array shows that nine times five plus nine times two equals nine times seven. The unknown is 60. Whoa. Okay. It happened again. Come on. There we go. The unknown is 63. So nine times seven equals 63. There are 63 beetles on display. Okay. Let's do another one. A pet store sold some gerbils. Each gerbil costs some money. Okay, so gerbils, <clears throat> and they each cost a certain amount of money. So a pet store sold three gerbils. Each gerbil costs $7. Okay, so I see the three gerbils. Each one has a price tag of $7. A pet store sold three gerbils. Each gerbil costs $7. How much money did the pet store make selling the gerbils? So I'm going to write three groups of $7 as three times $7 or 
or you can write it vertically just like they did here. Okay, we're going to use the commutative property of multiplication. So we know, or you know, 7 times 3 equals 21. So you can just turn the array and 3 times 7 is 21. So 3 times 7 is 21. Ugh, why does that keep happening? Okay, 3 times 7 is 21. So the pet store made $21 on the sale of the gerbils. Note that the dollar sign goes in front of the money amount, not after. I'm, I've been seeing this from students, and that is not how you write dollars, okay? The cent sign goes after the number. So if it was 21 cents, you would do it like that. I know we say $21, but the dollar sign goes in front, okay? All right, guided practice. Use a known fact and the commutative property to find each product. So seven times five equals. The known fact is five times seven. So fill in the known fact, pause your video, and then come back for your answer. Okay, the known fact, 5 times 7 is 35. Now put the same number in for 7 times 5. 35. Okay, number 2, 7 times 2 equals blank. The known fact is 2 times blank equals blank. Pause your video. Fill in the two blue blanks on the bottom part. Okay, so 2 times 7 we know is 14. Now take that answer and put it after 7 times 2 equals 14. Okay, let's look at our independent practice. If you are supposed to follow my directions, continue on. Otherwise, you can stop the video now. Okay, you're going to find each unknown, decompose the factor into 5 plus 2. You are going to, for this thing, you're going to use 5 plus 2. Don't try and use another one. Okay, so you're going to fill in all the blue blanks and make sure that you add, the, that you add these two numbers right here to get this answer here. Add that to get that. Okay, don't, don't draw the purple stuff in there. Okay, use a known fact and the commutative property to find each product. So you are going to write the commutative property for this down here with the answer and then put the answer in up there. You're going to get a point for each blue line. You're going to find each unknown down here. You're going to use the commutative property and you will get a point for each blue line. And then for 14, 15, 16, and 17, you can solve those however you like. If you want to use your multiplication chart or whatever. And I just realized I forgot to post your multiplication chart. I'll do that now. So anyway, so there you go. Now, if you have watched this entire video, here comes the Easter egg. Draw two lines under 437 at the bottom of this page, and you will get bonus points. Okay, that is how we multiply by 7.